Hello everyone. Welcome to the next session of Strength of Materials. In this session, we will take up a new topic of thin cylinders and spherical shells. In the image you can see here, there is a cylindrical vessel which is shown and this is a spherical vessel. Both the vessels are different in shape, but the only similarity between the two is that they are thin in nature. When I say thin, it means that the outer diameter is said DO and the inner diameter is said DI. This thickness T in between the two is actually going to be very very less. That is why it is termed as shell. When I say shell, you can understand in AutoCAD or when you use a software like ANSYS, there when you have shell, it means that you show the thickness as 2 to 3 mm, which means it is very very thin. So that is why it is called as thin cylinder, which means the thickness is less and spherical shells, again it means that the thickness is less. Now let's discuss a little bit in detail about this. Thin cylinder, thick cylinder and spherical vessels. Together they are called as pressure vessels. The reason is these kind of cylinders and spherical vessels are used for carrying of liquids and gases that is fluids which are going to be under pressure. So they are containers that hold fluid, liquid and gases or it could be liquid or gases whatever it is under pressure. Some of the examples are boilers. We are well versed with steam boilers and mechanical pipelines. There are pipelines which carry gases to our homes also these days. They carry biogas. Then there is cooking gas cylinders which are available. We are well versed with the LPG cylinders which are available in the market. Then there is something called as air compressor tank. It is a tank wherein you let the air enter at a particular temperature and pressure and then the air is compressed and the compressed air is then supplied for other applications. So there are air compressor tanks and oxyacetylene cylinders are the two cylinders which carry oxygen and acetylene each and they are used for welding purpose wherein both of them are required. So they carry liquid or gases under pressure. Now why are we studying this or why, why is the design so important? Because the failure of pressure vessels result in loss of life. Say if there is an LPG cylinder and suddenly it explodes or there is a leakage, you can understand how dangerous it can be. Say you just light a matchstick in any corner of the house and there is a leakage in your cylinder, your entire house can be set ablaze. So it is so dangerous. There can be damage to equipment, which is very sure. Say your boiler has some cracks. Then obviously it is a damage to the instrument itself. And health hazards by sudden bursting or explosion by simple failure like leakage permitting lethal or highly explosive gases. This is also possible. There are containers. You know, you must have seen on the highways that there are many vehicles which carry tanks at the back end of the vehicle. You know, trucks carry tanks at the back. So they are all pressure vessels. They are carrying some of the other kind of gases, you know, from one end to another. It could be in liquefied form. So if there is a sudden release of pressure or there is a crack, what happens is because of the pressure change, the liquid will get converted into gas and it is released into the atmosphere. So you can understand that the people around will be completely subjected to that kind of a lethal incident, which means it can be dangerous and deadly completely. It can kill a person Spot if the gases are dangerous. For example, if you have SO2 or you have NO2 in the containers and they just release in the atmosphere, you can understand they are so dangerous for our life. So they can escape into an ambient atmosphere if there is a leakage or there is a pressure valve release. Hence design of vessels containing fluids under pressure is to be carefully done to avoid mishaps. So this is very important. Here you can see a steam boiler. This is an LPG gas cylinder. This is an air compressor tank and this is the oxygen acetylene cylinders. Okay, next we'll talk about the difference between a thin and a thick cylinder. In this chapter, we are studying about thin cylinders. We will take up thick cylinders in some further sessions. Now, we'll talk about thin cylinder. The wall thickness is less than 1 by 20th of inner diameter of the cylinder. So, say your inner diameter is DI. So, it is 1 by 20 of this inner diameter. That is your thickness T, which means it is very, very less. 
and when you talk about thick cylinder it is more than or equal to 1 by 20th of inner diameter so it is obviously more here this value is going to be less than this value and for thick cylinder it is more than or equal to this value so obviously your thickness is quite greater for thin cylinder the hoop stress is assumed to be uniformly distributed over the thickness now what is this hoop stress suppose if i talk about a cylinder which is carrying some kind of liquid or gas whatever it is these liquid inside will be having some pressure pressure vessels are vessels which are containing liquid or gases under pressure which means they are pressurized and put inside so this kind of a liquid or gas may exert some pressure on these walls from inside and when you see that the pressure is more this cylinder may burst open in this fashion which means it will break into two pieces upward and downward there will be two different pieces so this kind of a uh, pressure will obviously lead to some kind of stress generated by the material which means the material does not want to change its shape and size so in that case these material will start applying some kind of stress so when i remove one portion out of this and i say that this is my top portion okay so here on this surface is where i'm going to get the stress on the body because the pressure is upward so my stress will be downward it has to be reversed this is called as hoop stress or circumferential stress because the entire diameter over here you can see because of this pressure this diameter starts getting enlarged and when the diameter is enlarged so is the circumference affected so that is why this stress is called as circumferential stress or hoop stress now this is drawn for thin cylinder you can see there is a linear variation or uniform distribution of this kind of a stress but when i talk about hoop stress for thick cylinder it is not going to be uniformly varying as we have just discussed it is going to be something like this it can be a parabolic shape this way or it could be this way the radial shear stress is neglected now radial shear stress means on this kind of a surface there is no shear like this which means these two surfaces will not shear open now that happens because of your thickness being too less and in thick cylinder it is considered because your thickness is more so shear stress along the radius is more because of the thickness being more now some examples of thin cylinder are tires you have seen tires of trucks of cars of bicycles everything they are going to contain gases which is under pressure inflated balloons this is something which you are aware of then gas storage tanks like i told you about your air compressors or you have your oxyacetylene cylinders or you have lpg cylinders they are all examples of thin cylinder when i talk about thick cylinder the examples are gun barrels high pressure vessels in oil refinery industries so where you have oil refineries there you will have the vessels which are going to be of thick type because that is the application required over there you know you want to keep your container quite thick like your gun barrel now for a gun barrel obviously it has to be thick because it is a metal tube through which your projectile or the shot charge is fired so for that case when you are firing obviously there will be a recoil velocity in firing action so that is why you need little bit of thick material over there you cannot have thin cylinders being used in that case so this is the difference between the two next we'll talk about the stresses in the walls of thin cylinders when the vessels are under pressure due to fluid the fluid exerts pressure equally in all directions as a result of this cylinder has a tendency to inflate something that i just told you thus due to the pressure of the fluid diameter will increase and circumference gets enlarged this generates circumferential stress or hoop stress we have discussed about it this stress is tensile in nature as i showed you if this is your surface and you are applying stress like this it is actually going to pull your cylinder so this is of tensile type if the ends of the cylinders are closed then the pressure at the ends will lead to stresses in the walls in a direction parallel to the longitudinal axis of the cylinder and this stress is termed as longitudinal stress now suppose this is my container cylindrical one 
say this is a closed end and here also the surface is closed if i close these two ends the pressure of the liquid will develop on the sideways that is on these surfaces so when the pressure is generated here your cylinder will have a tendency to break from between so when say one end breaks you know this is your one end of the cylinder and this is the other end of the cylinder it is breaking so when the pressure is in this direction the stress will be generated on this side now you can see that this direction of stress that i'm showing is actually parallel to this longitudinal axis or the length of the cylinder so this is called as longitudinal stress these two stresses that is the sigma c hoop stress that i'm calling and longitudinal stress that i'm showing as sigma l are uniformly distributed over the thickness of the cylinders as i have shown you you can see they are uniformly distributed and both are tensile in nature that means both are causing a pull effect on the material so you can see the diagram the same diagram that i have drawn for hoop stress you can see the cylinder breaks like this it is breaking along the length actually and here you can see that the circumference is getting affected so this is called as circumferential stress which is distributed over the entire length and when you see over here it is actually breaking like this your cylinder breaks like this so it is breaking along the circumference but the effect is along the length of the body hence it is called as longitudinal stress so this is an important point that you need to remember the breaking of the material will happen along a particular direction for example for circumferential stress the breaking is along the length and for longitudinal stress the breaking is along the circumference it is completely reversed and they are named also reversely because the effect for circumferential stress it is because of the circumference getting affected and for longitudinal stress it is so because the length is getting affected but the direction is circumferential and here the direction is longitudinal so you just have to remember this difference Now we'll talk about the failure of thin cylinder due to an internal pressure. On account of internal pressure P that I have shown you, the walls of the cylinders are subjected to tensile stresses. This is self-explanatory now. If these stresses exceed the permissible limit, so there could be some value of stress that is maximum. You know, so you should design your thin cylinders or the spherical vessel such that this value of sigma l and sigma c should be obviously less than the maximum value for which you design your body so these are the values on which your instrument will be say working on and the maximum value will be completely different the cylinder may fail by splitting up or developing cracks in any one of the two ways as shown in the figures the forces due to the pressure of the fluid acting vertically upward and downward on the cylinder tends to burst the cylinder as shown in figure 2a such a failure is called failure due to circumferential stress now you can see over here this is figure 2a you can see that because it is breaking along the length and this is the pressure on these surfaces you will see your stress being generated from here and from here both the directions so this is called as circumferential stress sigma c and the forces due to the pressure acting at the ends of the cylinders tend to burst the cylinder sideways like i told you as shown in the figure 2b such a failure is known as longitudinal stress so you can see that this is acting on the sides of the cylinder and this is causing the cylinder to break like this you know this way and it is breaking into two parts so the length actually gets elongated before it breaks obviously there has to be some strain also in the material there will be some change in length so this length is going to change and hence it is called as longitudinal stress and this surface which you see over here on both the sides are the ones on which you will see your stress being generated this is called as sigma l and both of them are tensile in nature as i have shown you so with this i end the first session i hope you have understood the basics of what is circumferential stress what is longitudinal stress on which direction it is applied and on which surface it is causing an effect if you have any doubts please write to me in the comment section in the next session we will see some expressions for these change in circumference diameter length volume that is happening so see you in the next session thank you